this episode of Repair Geek, I show you how to do a tune-up on your 3 liter V6 Ford Fusion or Mazda 6. With that, let's get started. All right, so our ultimate goal here is we need to get to the back three cylinders. That's the majority of work on this job. The front three, obviously, are very accessible. So, long story short, this is what we're gonna end up doing. We're gonna take all the hoses off the back, the EGR loose, but do not disconnect the EGR pipe, and basically just lay this intake over here somewhere to get it out of the way to get to the rear three cylinders. So that's kind of the game plan we're going with. Uh, I'm gonna take you guys along with me and we'll see what we get. Step one, disconnect your battery. First thing I'm going to do before we even get really digging into this thing is I'm just going to blow everything out with compressed air and try and get all the loose, you know, dirt, debris, all that kind of stuff out of here. That way I don't risk dropping anything down into the ports in the intake. Kind of my game plan here is I'm just basically going to start here and work my way that way. Um, first thing I'm going to do is I got a clamp here for the air intake tube that I'm going to remove. There's a red clip on this uh, throttle body connection. Pull the red clip out, push in, that comes right off. And then I'll try and pull this off here. There. All right, so the EGR, we've got a bolt here, bolt here where my pinky is, and a bolt here. So I'm going to pull those three bolts out, and hopefully this EGR will pull straight out and release itself from the intake. If you need to label these bolts, no big deal. If you need to, if that's what you need to get it done, do it. Looks like that should uh, pull straight out. That shouldn't be a big deal. All right, so coming back to the backpack here, um, this plug doesn't go anywhere, so I'm not taking that off. This one goes to the brake booster, take this clamp off. This one goes to the PCV valve. There's actually a quick release down here on the valve cover. And that'll come right off. When I say quick quick release, it's just like this. It has a green tab that you push over and pull out. That's it. And then when you go to put it back on, that's it. So this PCV hose is right here in the back. It's uh, kind of a pain to record, but 
I'm sure you guys will find it if you just follow this hose back right here. Okay, the map sensor over here in the corner just has a tab on the back. It should release just like that. There is a wiring harness clip right here that you're going to need to remove. Cat's claws work fantastic on these kind of connections. They're just these little uh, Christmas tree looking deals. Pulls off. That. This hose here that I have my finger on actually goes to the bottom side of the throttle body. So I'm going to leave the throttle body in place and pull the intake and just leave the throttle body hang there. Got another clip here in the corner. All right, so I had to take a break for a minute. My kit, my camera battery went dead, but I ended up getting the intake off. And how I did it was I actually removed um, the EGR valve from this bracket there's two bolts here in the back that bolt the egr onto the bracket and then once you get this up you can just slide this out um, there is a gasket there is a gasket from the bracket to the egr valve here so something you want to be mindful of when you pull that apart that there is a gasket there i'm going to try and reuse it it came off pretty cleanly actually but if yours comes off in layers like the layers separate and half of it ends up on the bracket and the other half is over on the EGR valve, you're going to want to buy a new gasket. Um, but once you get that out, this thing pulls right off. And you just lay it off to the side right here, and I just kind of wedge it up against the hood to hold it, and we're there. I'm going to get some rags and just shove them down inside the ports here because... Uh, if you drop a bolt down inside that engine, you got a mess on your hands. So I'm going to do all six ports real quick, and we'll be back in a second. All right, so after you get your ports all uh, covered up, we'll go straight for the coils. Each one is an 8 millimeter bolt.
So once you get your bolts out under your electrical plug, there's just a tab here on the back. You push that tab down. They're a little snug, but they come on. Now we'll pull our coils out. Now we go right for the spark plug. So this car has this car has 97,000 on it. Ford recommends to do it at 90. Um, this is a 09, and this is 2017. So car's eight years old. Threads are a little dry. They may squeak a little bit on their way out, but these the three O's not too uh, notorious for breaking off spark plugs or doing anything too crazy like a 5.4, but. And after uh, 97,000, they really don't look all that bad, but Ford says to do it. It's got plenty of mileage on it. It's time. So one thing I am going to do before I put this in the cylinder head is uh, I'm going to hit it with a little bit of anti-seize. Just give it a little dab on the threads, and hopefully it'll come out easy for the next guy. I did gap the plugs. Um, I did gap this one. Uh, the gap on a normally aspirated Ford, so like a non-turbo engine, a non-EcoBoost, is usually about 52 to 58 thousandths. Um, I checked them all. They're right where they're supposed to be, right out of the box. So um, I'm just going to show you guys this one plug as far as the actual procedure. Uh, when I get the intake ready to go back on, I will bring you guys back then, but um, if you've done one spark plug, you've uh, kind of done them all, so just in an effort to save time, I'm only going to show you one plug, but they're all the exact same procedure. So each spark plug gets tightened to 132 inch-pounds. Um, that is 11 foot-pounds if uh, your torque wrench doesn't do inch-pounds. That's it. Another thing worth mentioning um, is if you pull the coil out and it's got a bunch of oil all over it, you need to change your spark plug tube seals. Um, I'm not sure if they're part of a valve cover gasket on this, but it will cause uh, misfire issues and stumbling and stuff like that. And over time, the end of the boot for the coil will actually swell up and degrade. So. Something else to watch for, out for while you're doing this. Just uh, something to keep in mind. All right, so I lowered our intake back on. And the first thing I'm going to reattach is the EGR just because I don't want to get that gasket screwed up. So if I jostle this thing around with the EGR bolted up, it's less likely to damage that gasket.
right, so let's get this intake locked down. Eight millimeter bolts. I'm just gonna run them in by hand as far as I can. I will torque them to spec here in a minute. Uh, some of you may be wondering, is it really worth torquing spark plugs? Well, I had a teacher in college that his rule of thumb, he was a tech, who was, was actually trained in auto mechanics, but anyway, um, his rule of thumb was if it took you longer than an hour to get there, you should probably torque it with a torque wrench. So to me, that makes a lot of sense just because it's pe good peace of mind at the very minimum. So that's why I torqued the plugs. Maybe overkill, but Makes it easier to sleep at night. I think my next purchase is gonna be a 12 volt impact driver. It would speed up stuff like this so much more. But you guys at home, well, I'm sure you're, most of you are probably in the same boat, so. Okay. So the torque spec for the bolts is 90 inch pounds. So this is gonna be the first one. The second one's gonna be here. Third one is going to be back here. Up here to this one for four. This driver's side front corner for five, right here. Six is going to be right here. Seven is going over to this far corner over here. And the last one here, number eight. All right, so moving right along here, I'm gonna get the uh, throttle body bolted back up.
take two back in. there all the way all right so now we come around to the back reattach our brake booster hose Just like that secured with a clamp PCV hose goes back on Just like that Lap sensor gets reconnected Christmas tree clip. The wire goes in. One Christmas tree clip here. And that's about it. Uh, all in all, not that bad of a job. Uh, probably figure three hours. I went probably three and a half. Uh, my camera ran out of batteries and I had to wait for my light to charge and among other things, but figure three hours, uh, maybe a little bit faster if you have some power tools, but um, really not that bad of a job, all things considered. Uh, just looking at it like this, it's kind of intimidating if you know you don't know what all you need to take apart, but really not that bad of a job. And the last thing we need to do, reconnect our battery. All right guys, that's it. The car is running, doing what it's supposed to do. Uh, I'll put links in the description to all the tools that I use, the spark plugs that I use, um, the anti-seize that I use. Um, if you found this video useful, hit like. If you didn't, hit dislike. If you guys want to see more content from me, hit subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys.